Yeah, well, I'm really, really excited uh, to jump in this series. And again, I didn't know if I was going to get to jump into it. Uh, second service. If you missed last week uh, message and you want to go back, you can go to our YouTube channel at RLC SAC TV and you can catch the message that I preached in first service, but we didn't get to in second service. And uh, how you know God is good. He's leading his church. And uh, I'm really excited about this series. Um, every summer we, we pick a direction. We ask the Lord to direct us and guide us and lead us. We do that with all of our uh, messages. Uh, we don't always do series. Sometimes we do one-offs. Um, but this summer we're going to be focusing on a series that we've entitled Getting God Right. Getting God Right. Understanding and knowing the character and nature of God. In 1992, Amy and I got married, and how many of you guys know or have ever been to the coast and you've got a hotel to stay in? Anybody besides me, you've went to the coast? Well, usually at a coastal hotel, there's, there's three options. You get the garden poolside view, or you get the partial ocean view which basically means you got to go outside on your balcony, lean over the side, and there you can see the ocean right over there. Yeah, over there. Or it's far away over there. You see a little bit of the ocean. Or there is what they call the ocean view. How many of you ever had the ocean view before? I mean, that is the best, best view. And so when Amy and I got married in 1992, uh, we actually, it was our last time there actually, but in 1992, we went to Maui and we went to this new hotel, which was brand new. It was less than a year. Uh, it was open less than a year when we got there and the place, you guys, I'm at the time 20, 22 years old and it was so nice and pristine. It was like intimidating. I never stayed in a place like this. It was called the Kilani, which in Hawaiian means the white heavens. And I'm just telling you, for seven days, I thought I was in a heavenly place. For seven days, it was amazing. And uh, the hotel, at that time, Amy and I didn't have credit cards. We were taught not to have credit cards and, and pay cash for everything. And, and so we did, and, and we were trying to be responsible. So I saved up about, I don't know, I think I had about $2,000 cash. But uh, I took $2,000 cash with me. And because I didn't have a credit card, we got to the rental car place. They took $500 for a deposit. I got to the hotel. They took another $400 for the room deposit. And so for the whole seven days, I'm down to about $1,000. So we went from, listen, my plan of going fine dining. Now we've transferred over to Denny's. So we went from fine dining to the honeymoon to Denny's. In fact, there was a couple by the pool that we met one day. They took us next door to the Hyatt Regency and bought our dinner. They, were, they had been married 25 years. They said, when we come, we just felt like the Lord wanted us to bless a newlywed couple. And I was like, hallelujah, you picked the right one. <laughs> Glory to God. But we get in our hotel room, and I'm talking, this place is for sleep. And like... We had reserved the ocean view, and so like, I walk over to the drapes, and you guys know this moment, right? You, go, you open to the drapes, and you're like, whew. And when I did that, I wasn't looking at the beach. I was looking at the garden view at Barbara and Bob. I had not got, I got the ground, or the garden view the poolside view, and I was so disappointed. I said, no, 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 I reserved the ocean view. And so I ran down to the desk, and I said, hey, we reserve we're on our honeymoon. Hello, we're on our honeymoon. You need to make this right, right now, else I'm gonna be ended up in divorce court in a minute, right? Hey, make this right. And so they said, sir, we've got you, and they upgraded us to that ocean view, right? And it was all about the Kilani, right? All about the white heavens. It was the best, best view. And as we get ready to head into the summer, I want to encourage you, listen, as a body, listen, 
as a person individually and as a body, I want to challenge you. Let's upgrade our view of God in this hour. Let's be a church that doesn't settle for a downgraded, come on, garden view, come on, partial view. But come on, how many know in Christ we have the best view? We've been seated in heavenly places. We've got the best view. And I want to challenge you this summer let's not settle for a downgraded view. How many? need an upgrade. You see, this is what I want to say. If you hear nothing else today, listen, your view of God, who you believe God to be, what he is like is the single most important factor in your life. A.W. Tozer wrote a book called The Knowledge of the Holy, and I've been rereading that. I read that when I was first saved, and I'm actually going back, and I'm rereading it again. It's a classic. I want to encourage you to read that book during this series. It's a short read, but it's an amazing read, and I'm going to be quoting some of the things uh, out of that book in just the first few pages that he said throughout today's message, but one of the things he says was this. The church has surrendered her once lofty concept of God and has substituted for one so low, so ignoble as to be utterly unworthy of thinking, worshiping men. This she has done not deliberately, but little by little and without her knowledge and her very unawareness only makes her situation all the more Tragic. Now check this out. He wrote that in 1961. How much more true is that today? It's so critical in the day that we're living in that, listen, above anything else, listen, the greatest responsibility that I believe that I have as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, one of the responsibilities that I believe I hold as your pastor, that I'm going to answer to God one day. You won't answer. I will answer that as a church, listen, we have to get God right. In this hour, listen, when everything in the world is going wrong, listen, the church of Jesus Christ must get God right in this hour if we're going to truly live out the expression of Jesus Christ to this world. What do I mean by getting God right? Listen, if our conceptions about God are wrong, it will lead us to wrong thinking, wrong decisions, and wrongdoing. And how you know wrongdoing leads to wrong living. You see, if we're wrong about God, we are going to be wrong about everything else. The opposite then is true. If we get God right, it will lead us to thinking right. Come on, making decisions right, doing right. Come on, living right. How many want to do right and live right? It all starts with getting God right. And that's why the last several weeks, listen, we're not going back to church as usual. Listen, I'm not going back, listen, to just just giving you a a little message. Listen, I'm, I'm here pouring out my heart. Listen, I'm here, listen, I'm here to give you everything that's within me because what's in me, listen, I want you to catch because there's a hunger in me for something more than doing church as usual. If we get God right, everything else will be right. So how do we get God right? The first thing that we have to do as a church is we have to exchange our low view of God for a high view of God. A low view of God is a result of losing the correct concept and the sense of the majesty of God. The majesty of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator of the universe is who we worship. It's the majesty of God. Majesty means in all his greatness, in all his splendor, in all his character and nature, everything that he is, we encounter that when we come together and we worship. 
We're not singing words on a screen. Come on. We're worshiping the living God. A God who is alive. A God who wants to touch you and minister to you and heal you and put your life back together. A loss of the majesty of God creates a travesty in your life. The loss of tra- the, the loss of the majesty of God creates a travesty in the church. A travesty is a debased, distorted, or grossly inferior imitation. And I don't know about you, but I don't like imitation crab meat. Listen, if I'm going to pay for sushi, I'm paying for the real crab. But we got to stop settling for the imitation. Come on, we've got to stop settling, settling for less than what God has designed us for. In other words, when we lose sight of God's majesty, it's really easy for us to fall into idolatry. You see, when we lose sight of the majesty of God, we begin to lower our view of God, and we begin to make him in our image so that we can manage him. We like to put God in our box and keep him in his box. Idolatry is anything more important to you than God. Anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God. Anything you seek to give what only God can give. You see, a low view of God will ultimately lead your heart and my heart to long for things that will never satisfy us. A low view of God in my life, listen, will lower my expectations in life. That's why we've been talking about faith for two months. Why? Because we need a faith lift. Come on, the body of Christ needs a faith lift. Come on, how many know we serve a big God? Come on, faith, come on, is having confidence in the unshakable character of God. But guess what? If you have a low view, your life is always shaken. It has been said a low view of God is the cause of a hundred lesser evils everywhere among us. You see, A.W. Tozer said this, it is impossible to keep our moral practices sound and our inward attitudes right while our idea of God is erroneous and inadequate. He hasn't been more than enough in our lives. He hasn't been a more than enough in our church. But how do you know it's time to say, God, enough is enough. You are more than enough. I'm not settling for less. I'm not settling for a counterfeit. I'm not going to worship an idol. God, I need your majesty and your greatness and your splendor restored in my life. You see, you and I must exchange our low view of God for a high view of God. Philippians 4.8, God bless you. (laughs) Philippians 4.8, summing it all up, friends, I'm reading out of the message, paraphrase. I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, Compelling, how many know the Lord is compelling? Gracious, listen to this the best, not the worst. Did you see the exchange? Come on, some of you, you're in here and you have a low view of God, and because you have a low view of God, you have a low view of yourself. You come to God saying you're unworthy, and He's looking at you saying, No, you're my child. Come on, I died for you. I have an inheritance for you to walk in. God, listen, God sees your best life, not your worst life. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Come on, how are you thankful for that? Come on, how you need to make an exchange? Look at your neighbor. No, just kidding, just kidding. But how many know we need to make an exchange? I like this last part, things to praise, not things to curse. I know about you, 
There's a lot to curse about these days. And it's so easy, listen, to find the worst. It's so easy to point out, come on, what's not going right. It's so easy, come on, to find out, listen, the things that we should curse, come on, and be negative about. But how many of you know, listen, God sees the good. We've got to be deliberate. Listen, it's so easy to point out what's going wrong. What's not going right? Hello? Listen, it's going to take people with a high view of God. Listen, to point out the gold. Hey, this is what's going right. Come on, look at this person's life. You see all the bad things. No, no, no. I only see the good things that God is doing in their life. You see, when I begin to praise God in all of his majesty, in all of his splendor, and in all of his greatness, and in all of who he is, listen, how many know my view, come on, begins to go higher? I begin to raise my view, and as my views raise, how many know my life raises too? Listen, my perspective changes, and when my perspective changes, how many know my life changes too? My concepts of God and my sense of awe, and I just believe this morning, and you got to hear my heart. God wants to restore holy awe to his church. It leads me to my second point, and this isn't a feel-good message today, so bear with me. Refuse to be entertained on Sundays and insist on encountering God every day. Listen, I'm guilty of this, but I want to challenge all of us. We say things like, that was a good service. We say things like that word was on fire, and I appreciate it, believe me. And we say things like that was great worship. That was a fantastic message series. My children really enjoyed kids' church today. My teens are really enjoying the breakfast club. These are all good things. Would you agree? But as a pastor, I'd be lying if I said it. It doesn't do my heart good when I hear these things because they're important to having a healthy church. But I also would be lying if I said those things, if all that's, if if that's all the things I heard, I would be completely satisfied because us doing things well will only keep consumers as long as we don't make a mistake, as long as we don't do something wrong, or as long as we keep meeting your expectations, everything will be all right. But as soon as we, may, we misspeak or we say something wrong or, or, or a worker doesn't show up in kids church or we don't have this program or that program. You see, that's what entertainment does. It's the difference between an entertaining center, entertainment center and a center where you can encounter God. Entertainment diverts our attention from what's really going on in our life. And in many ways, it's an escape from reality until your reality demands your attention. I don't know about you, but 2020 was a long year. And in 2020, you guys, I have a confession. I had my first Netflix binge. (laughs) Pastor Damien told me about this Netflix binge. He told me, he said, you don't want to get this binge thing going on, especially during the pandemic. He said, you don't, you got to avoid the Netflix binge. Well, I'm not a big TV watcher. So I was like, what's Pastor Damien know? You know, like, I ain't going to binge on Netflix. I, I, I don't need that. I, that's just not me. I'm just going to say this. It all started because Josiah said, dad, Have a seat on the couch. It's all his fault, by the way. I started asking about, he said, dad, dad, he said, stop. He said, go downstairs. He's all, you you don't want to start watching this. I said, no, I, Damien, Pastor Damien's told me about these binges. I said, I don't, I don't binge. He said, and then I started watching and all of a sudden I started asking him questions. He said, no, I'm not going to tell you where, he said, I'm not going to tell you, go downstairs. And before I knew it, you guys, I was on the third episode. 
I was on the third episode. I was, I was binging hard. And all of a sudden, I found myself. Listen, like I did my first network binge in like two and a half days. Like I got like 10 episodes done in like two and a half days. Like I was so entertained, guys. Like I forgot about y'all. I forgot about, I forgot about the staff. Like I, I even forgot I was married. Like I was binging hard. Like Amy was like, where are you at? I'm like, I'm binging on Netflix, you know. I mean, I was binging hard, you guys. Entertainment had diverted my attention completely from everything that was going on. And if we look at church like an entertainment center, listen, it'll divert our attention just for about 90 minutes. But listen, when you step outside of this church, everything else is still going to be the same. Your problems are going to still be there. Why? You didn't encounter the living God. You were entertained for 90 minutes. The difference between Entertainment and encounter is that entertainment amuses me and encounter with God amazes me. Entertainment, listen, entertainment diverts my attention and encounter with God gets my attention. It captivates all that I am. Entertainment makes worship a concert to be enjoyed. An encounter with God's presence should be a result of my worship and expectation as I come. Listen, entertainment makes Pastor Dean a celebrity preacher, but an encounter with God, come on, gives me the responsibility of a good shepherd to lead you into an encounter, life-changing encounter with God. You see, a healthy church, listen, yes, we have good programming. Yes, listen, you can get connected in community. Yes, all those things are important. But listen, a healthy church in this hour must have a holy awe. A high view of God. Not molded in my image. But listen, I am to reflect his image. You see, the church was never designed for you and I to be, to be amused. It was designed for you and I to be amazed. Listen, when people walk through these doors, they should find their destiny, not be looking for Disney. Matthew 12, 22, this was the pattern in Jesus' ministry. Then a demon oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him and he healed him so that the man spoke and saw and all the people were amazed. Mark 1, 26, and the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him and they were all amazed. And they were all amazed. And he rose immediately, he picked up his bed, went out before them all, so they were all and glorified God. After three days, they found Jesus in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, asking them questions, and all who heard him wore a... Luke 4, 46, and they were all... Amazement always points to a greater revelation of who God is, his character, and his nature. Listen, but amusement will always point to how good man is. Amazement always leads me to questions that lead to a deeper understanding of who God is. Amusement will ultimately lead you to questioning God. Look at the questions that they asked. And all the people were amazed and they said, can this be? Come on, can this be? Could you imagine? Listen, if you so encountered the presence of God, we all just looked at each other. Could, be, could this be the revival that everybody's talking about? Could this be, come on, could this be what everybody's been praying for? A move of the Holy Ghost? Could it be? And they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves saying, what in the world is going on here? What is this? It says, and they were all amazed and said to one another, what is this word? You see, when we are amazed with God and not amused by man, it will cause us to ask questions that will lead us to getting God right. 
all these questions, listen, we're, we're pointed to saying, who, 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 and this morning you are here and God is wanting to reveal himself to you, to you, to you, and to you. You see, the essence of idolatry, A.W. Tozer said, the essence of idolatry is the entertainment of thoughts about God that are unworthy of him. It leads me to my last point as Pastor Brandon comes. A high view of God comes from our hunger to know the character and nature of God. Our knowledge of God's character and nature determines what we think, how we think, how we act, what we believe, come on, how we worship, how we live, and how we invest our entire lives. Listen, I'm just not preaching this to you this morning. Listen, I'm sweating bullets up here because I am passionate about what God wants to do in this place. High views of God, come on, high views of God will lead to high praise of God. Listen, listen, high views of God, listen, won't allow you to be 30 minutes late to service because, listen, you need an encounter with God for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Listen, you need more than the word. Come on. You need his presence. You need his power. You need his purpose. That's what you need. High views of God increase my faith in God. High views of God give me an understanding of who I am in God. Listen, some of you, you're beating yourself up. You're beating yourself up because you have a low view of God. And because you have a low view of God, you have a low view of yourself. He created you in his image. Yeah, zits and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your big nose and all. Yeah, yeah. Your, your little tummy like I got and all. Yeah, yeah. He created you just the way you are. High views of God reveal the purposes of God for my life. High views of God allow me to live out the truth of God. And high views of God, listen, should shape my worldview. Everybody talking about a worldview, but listen, if you don't get God right, you don't know who he is. Listen, your worldview can be a hundred different things. I'll say it again, your view of God, who you believe God to be, what he is like is the single most important factor in your life. How do I know that? Because it changed my life. It changed my life. My buddy Paul knows this. Listen, our first teaching in Bible college together was God is love. And when I knew, listen, that God was all love, 100% love, and that he accepted me unconditionally, that there was nothing that I could do to earn it. Listen, my life was revolutionized by what? His love. Psalm 107, verse 9, for he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Last week, I talked about the longing for more. Is there anybody besides me, listen, that you just want more? Come on, you just want more. Listen, you're tired of the same. Some of you have been doing the same thing for 25 years, waking up at this time, going to church at this time. Come on, I don't want to be that anymore. I want more of God. First service all month long. We're, this is what we've done. We just said, you know what? We're not going to have a, a day of baptism where 15 people sign up and one person shows up. I'm going to do baptisms all month long. Yeah. You guys should have been here first service. We baptized our first person of the month. We, one person. I'm believing God for hundreds of people to get baptized this month. Listen, some of you, you need to be obedient. You need to obey Jesus' command to publicly declare what he's done in your life. Listen, what are you waiting for? It's not just symbolic. It's prophetic. Come on, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things are passed away. All things are made new. And so we're taking the stops off. 
I'm just like, staff, I don't care. Just get ready. We'll do baptism, spontaneous baptisms after service. If you want to get dunked after service, I'll climb in these clothes. I didn't bring a swimsuit today. Listen, every week, every day, people should be getting saved. People should be getting baptized. It shouldn't be limited to two times a year. And listen to this. It shouldn't just have to happen in church. Some of you have led people to the Lord. Actually, Joel did this uh, just last week. Actually, somebody called him and said, Joel, will you baptize my cousin? My cousin wants to get baptized. She wants to get baptized at the river. Now, Joel's not a pastor. He's a barber. He's my barber. Doesn't he do a good job? But, but one thing you got to know about Joel, he's a Holy Ghost barber. You get, a, you get a haircut from him, you might get delivered. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, listen, it's not limited to the pastoral staff. But listen, if you save them, you can clean them. <laughs> I don't know about you, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Listen, listen, I know, I know you could go to 100 churches that are doing it the same way bef- before COVID. Did they, uh, I'm, I'm not doing that. I, I just believe, listen, I believe there's a holy dissatisfaction in some people that are just saying, you know what? I can't go back. I can't go back. I got to see people getting saved. I got to see people getting baptized with the Holy Spirit. I got to see revival. I got to see something different. I can't do the same old, same old. I got to see God on the move in the earth today. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. That's the kind of feast that I'm talking about. You see, our hunger for God will direct us in having higher views of God. People want to argue. Listen, we can argue all day long. But listen, if your concepts of God are wrong, listen, the discussion is over. He is who he says he is. He is not a man that he should lie. Come on, he is unchangeable. Listen, if you want to have an opinion, have a high opinion of God. Listen, if you want to change your opinion, listen, now's the summer to do it. It's the summer to go all in for God. I'm hungry. How many of you are hungry for the Lord? Come on, if you're hungry, will you just stand and lift your hands to him? Come on, you just lift your voice to him. Come on, just just tell God, you know what, God? I, I need more. I need more, God. I need more, God. Come on, tell him. I need more, God. I need more, God. This morning you're here, you're ready to exchange your low view for a high view. I want you to just make your way to the front. Listen, I I can't take it and give you something, but only he can. Listen, if you just want to exchange your low view of God for a high view of God, would you just come down to the front and just find a place, listen, to just say, God, will you restore your majesty? God, will you change my opinion? God, I want who you are, all who you are. Come now, just come. Just come, don't wait. Just come, just say, I need more of God. I need more of him, all that he is. Just come and come. Yes, just worship. Just worship. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come on, just come. Just come. Come on. Come on, this isn't scripted. Just come. I will be. Welcome, welcome to RLC.